Ladies and gentlemen, gather round, you're all welcome. Welcome to the biggest little show on earth. Presented for your entertainment and your entertainment only. It's all free, it's all free. If you'll step up, I'll give you a brief analytical and biological resume of the remarkable merits and medicinal contents of Doc Bar's Cure-Alls. The ingredients of this rejuvenating and invigorating tonic is composed of a rare combination of roots, herbs, barks, berries, chemical minerals, and oils gathered from the far corners of the world. It's nature's miraculous cure for every disfiguration, fever, ailment, and chronic disorder known. The drugstore that called me was in Havana, Illinois. And uh, it was in 1973, late 1973, and the druggist said, we'd like to sponsor entertainment for our town festival. Uh, what could you do? And I said, Mr. Walters, I said, let's do a medicine show. And he said, that's a great idea. Who's going to do one today? I said, I'll find somebody. And that was the beginning. So I presented the first one the same way as I present it now, history and dedicated to the performers of the past. And some of the pieces of business that I use, the magic, the ventriloquism, uh, go back to those early shows. And I try to keep the show simple. And uh, I try to give uh, uh, a little insight to the profession to any young member of the audience who would like to take it up. Now, you two children have been holding two pieces of rope. You cut this piece of rope, is that right? Yeah. You had a straight piece of rope, is that right? You're about to see one of the really old mysteries in magic. Would both of you hold the ropes by the ends and show the audience what you have now? How'd you do that, Joe? I don't know. The look on your face just made my entire day. Let's give both of these kids a hand. Watching Dan Barth perform his one-man medicine show will take you back a hundred years to a time when touring tent shows, Chautauquas, and medicine shows provided entertainment for rural America. It's an authentic patent medicine show, sporting a real wagon that Dan painted himself. He hauls it by car instead of by horse, though, and he doesn't sell any magical elixirs. He says he doesn't want to cheapen history with pennies. Instead of dispensing medicine, he gives his audience a healthy dose of laughter. And what I'd like to have you do, Justin, as soon as Jessica checks them, you'll wave the wand over the bag. Take a hold of that, please, and just hold on to it. Push those down all the way. Now, watch carefully, folks. My hand will never enter the bag. Keep your eye on what is about to take place. The great Justin, performing before this semi-multitude crowd right here in Sandwich, Illinois, is about to give you one of his, one of his most amazing effects. Would you wave the wand over the bag, Justin? <laughs> I can see right now you're an artist. Would you do that once more, please? I like your style, Justin. You're a good boy. Even when the equipment failed, you smiled and kept right on going. You know, that's the secret of our business. As a kid in Peoria, Dan Barth used to sit in Martin's Magic Shop, all ears as he listened to the stories of the magicians and vaudeville performers talking about the old days. Some of them had been in real medicine shows at the turn of the century and Dan never forgot them or the yarns they'd spin. He's done quite a bit of research since then, and the lecture, magic, and ventriloquism he uses are a reminder of a bygone era in showbiz. The medicine shows were important. They were the roots of what we call trade shows and uh, variety shows, television. Uh, medicine shows and repertoire tent shows go hand in hand because they both uh, were active at the same period of time in our history in America uh, in the 1880s and 90s. Uh, there were very, very good entertainers on those early shows. Uh, they represented almost every facet of show business, jugglers, ventriloquists, magicians, uh, fine musicians, comedians. Uh, there was a variety of entertainment on the early shows, the repertoire company shows, the medicine shows, and um, many were not concerned with retail sales. Uh, they were more concerned with the uh, um, purveying the knowledge of their products to the public, and they would give away samples, they would uh, conduct free shows, and they were sponsored, uh, sponsored by these uh, uh, medicine shows. Hamlin's Wizard Oil was one of them. So they were actually company representatives uh, out doing a job as an entertainer. If you go to the convention halls today and you watch a trade show, 
you see the same thing. Um, I can't tell you how many people came to me in the last 11 years with stories about their experience with the medicine show, how they would really look forward to Saturday night. And one man told me over in Indiana, he said, Saturday night just wouldn't have been Saturday night without a medicine show in town. You know that this was a very common item that was sold on the shows, and it was good. It was, it was from all sure, because it was the oils and that's all right. He put, put, kept it in a little glass. This is a copy of the original. Yeah, you know, I read it here when we came in. So I had to come back and. You folks, you know, I have so many experiences like this, and you really, you, you make my show. Because, uh huh. You know, uh, well, this was fun too. This kind of made my really day understand. seeing that. Yeah. But I remember Harlem oil. And he took it a little bit every day. <laughs> it's a yeah. snake oil. This is really cute. Thank Did you? you? That's good. Enjoyed That's good. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Good. It's Appreciate all right. It. Thanks for stopping. Appreciate good. it. Have fun. Working the crowd is the hardest part of a live show, but Dan's a master at it. Between medicine shows, he's busy doing trade shows, so he gets a lot of practice. But he loves the intimacy of the medicine show and his enjoyment is contagious. His ventriloquist act with Max, the dummy, is a real crowd pleaser and a staple of every performance. The bit is modeled after vaudeville routines from the turn of the century, and the jokes are gentle and corny, reflecting a simpler time. What comes after E? I forgot you're supposed to say F. That's right. Let's say it now. What comes after F? Uh, G. What comes after G? Liz. <laughs> There's no letter in the alphabet, G whiz. I thought there was. No, there isn't. Now, what direction does the Mississippi River flow? Downhill. If you had two peppers, two cabbages, and two tomatoes, what would you have? Toss salad. No, you'd have six vegetables. What makes you so dumb? I'm a dummy. What's your excuse? Say goodbye, Max. Goodbye, Max. How's that? That's good. And that was Max. Some of the old showmen were con artists, rounders who never worked the same place twice. But Doc Dan Barth prefers to represent the quality entertainers who brought joy to the small towns along their route. When he's close to home, his son Robbie joins him with an escape act, also keeping a tradition of the tent shows, which were often family affairs. Dan's love of people and history charges every performance with his excitement. You're getting better at that every day. The best part about the show that keeps me going is the people. You meet so many beautiful people. And uh, it, uh, America's full of great folks. I just wish I could meet them all, you know. Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling blue? Dr. B will fix you up just 